1911s. You either love them or you hate them. I'd venture to say most people love them. But today, we're going to talk about one of my favorites on Blazing Bullets. Alright guys, here on uh, Blazing Bullets, uh, it's, it's safe to say that we love our 1911s and uh, this one is no exception. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the uh, good old Rock Island armor here. Although it's a solid gun, it's not going to be what we're really talking about today, although we will do a little bit of comparison. Now, actually what I'm talking about is this bad boy right here. This is a Dan Wesson Valor. Owned uh, by uh, CZ. It's uh, CZ's, uh, now CZ's custom shop. And it offers uh, some features that may be a little bit... Um, I don't know, more suited to the upper end 1911 uh, owner or somebody who desires some some higher quality features. Uh, let's get into it. So this is uh, how it would, would uh, come in the box. Uh, you would have two magazines. These are uh, Checkmate magazines. I've heard uh, some complaints about these, but I've never really had too much trouble with them. Um, I mean, I don't have any trouble with uh, the followers dipping down when I shoot them or anything like that. Um, it's kind of weird that they have like a, a little rounded um, follower here, but you know, you know, I guess you get two magazines, so who can complain? Actually, before we get into the Valor here, I actually purchased a uh, one of the new magazines from Wilson Combat, and I'll actually show you the spring. <clears throat> it has a new flatter spring that they introduced recently. Um, it's supposed to be have a lifetime warranty on it. It's uh, actually a flat wire spring and it was about uh, pretty steep, about $50, but a uh, very high quality magazine actually fits in this gun perfectly. It's uh, I, I could get you guys the model number in the description, but in the box you'll have a small oil bottle right about here I've actually used it all up. In fact, I like the oil that they gave you, uh, the break-in lube, so much that I bought a big tub of it. And I'm actually looking at it right now in my cleaning case. Very good stuff. Um, I really would advise uh, you guys to really give it a serious thought. Uh, it's really good for breaking in your gun, and I, I find it to be a good all-around all thicker type of oil. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the box, you also get a bushing wrench. I don't, uh, I mean, you might have some use for this in the beginning when you first uh, purchased the firearm, but it wasn't so tight for me um, that I had troubles, too much trouble with it. You always want to be careful with the new 1911, though, that you don't bust your eyes out with the uh, recoil spring. That could be a bad day. In the box, you'll find um, just some, some manuals, you know, the standard stuff. You know, your paperwork, throw that aside. And let's get to the gun itself. The Dan Wesson Valor is the flagship from CZ, uh, the Dan Wesson Custom Shop. It has a bunch of features that I, I really find to enhance the shootability of it. Um, one of which being the undercut trigger guard. You can actually see um, it is uh, pretty thin down here goes in a little bit really really good to get a higher grip on the firearm and I noticed that it does help it features the slimline g10 grips uh, these are from VZ um, and you can actually tell if I compare it you know side by side next to the uh, Rock Island Armory uh, you can definitely tell that it does offer you some uh, a slimmer grip and it works out pretty nice in my hand because I don't have very large hands it also comes with a Heine type uh, straight ledge uh, set of night sights, uh, two dot configuration. Um, they do glow fairly well in the dark. And what I really like about these is that it features the notch right here, the uh, the flat notch that you can, if need be, you know, maybe in a, you know, I hate to say it, but like a gunfight or something, if you have limited use, maybe you only have one hand operable, you can rack that easily off of a belt and, and you'll have no problems with it. Uh, assuming that you have, you guys have a good uh, carry belt, not something cheap and, you know, fake leather from Walmart. 
invest your invest uh, some maybe some bullet money into a good belt especially when you're carrying a gun this size uh, the duty coat finish uh, the duty coat finish is um, it, I, I heard that it used to be a Cerakote, uh, Cerakote but now it seems to be more of a uh, what do they call it uh, like a nitride type coating uh, very it's actually the best coating on a firearm I, I've ever dealt with uh, very easy to clean uh, it, it's not so slippery that you can't get a good firm grasp on the serrations when you're uh, racking it back and stuff and um, I really do like it in fact I even prefer it over the the Glock type Tenefer or the uh, Melanite which are pretty much the same thing um, it also features a lot of hand fitting in fact every piece in this firearm is is hand fit by Dan Wesson and even though it's not a full house custom gun one of the ways that they're able to charge you a lot less than something like you know an Ed Brown uh, Les Bear or Nighthawk something like that Wilson Combat is that they use some pretty advanced CNC machinery to get the firearm as close as possible um, to the tolerance they want and then what they'll do is they'll give the firearm to their gunsmiths and they'll round out some edges um, you know put just put a little bit more you know love and love and care into the gun and uh, finish everything out and that includes uh, some work on the trigger some work on the barrel work on the bushing I mean this gun is is uh, it's incredible for the price that you pay it also features um, pretty much most parts now made in-house as of from what I know in 2014 uh, they may still uh, outsource some parts to other companies, but as far as I know, most uh, parts on this gun are actually made uh, in-house. And that includes pretty much everything from what I'm aware, except for maybe the um, uh, grip safety back here. I do believe this is an Ed Brown piece, and the bushing is by EGW. Um, this is the full size model, but they do offer a model with a bobtail, which basically means that the grip is kind of uh, curved right here, uh, cut off a little bit, and that makes it a little bit easier on carries, especially for maybe some heavier guys. You know, if your if your stomach is kind of you know pushing up against the butt of this gun, uh, having that flat sort of edge right here will kind of uh, help you carry it a little easier. Um, as far as the the shooting of this gun and my experiences with it thus far although somewhat limited I can tell you that it has performed flawlessly um, it's a lot of people think that the mark of a quality 1911 is um, you know something that you can just rip right out of the box and, and shoot it and I agree and um, this gun is no exception I know that a lot of people also think that you know the tighter a 1911 is makes it you know the magical um, perfect you know uh, type of tolerance uh, for a 1911. I actually uh, disagree with that. I find that um, a a balance between you know nice and tight and there there's a kind of a fine line where you get to the point where it's too tight and then you start having some problems. A lot of people you know will re refer to it as kind of stacking tolerances when you're trying to put so many features on a gun you're trying to make it fit so close together that you just ac actually end up having more problems than it's worth. And this gun is actually the total opposite because you, you don't really have too many things that you don't need on the firearm. I mean, when you look at it, I guess uh, the simplicity of it is kind of uh, what makes it a beautiful gun to me, um, besides the fact that, you know, aesthetically it's pretty pleasing. Uh, but there's, there's just not too much, f too many frills about it. Um, very, very smooth operation. I can tell you guys that uh, racking this gun, I mean, it just feels like it's on ball bearings. And uh, the trigger, let's see if I can give you guys a good glimpse of uh, what the trigger might be like. Okay, let's go to the reset. I'm in right there. Uh, my, my Lyman trigger pull gauge measures this firearm at about uh, four and a half pounds or so, um, but they advertise three and a half, you know, four pounds, somewhere in there. Um, and as far as is carry ammo, I, I think a lot of people, you know, they get too caught up in the whole, 
you know, carry ammo ordeal, especially, you know, with different barrel lengths and everything like that, different grain bullets. Uh, typically what I like to carry in pretty much any 45, and I test it, by the way, is uh, critical duty. Uh, 45 this is the 45 auto plus p 220 grain flex lock version this is actually a sample one of those got the polymer tip in here and you do have to be careful with these guys because uh, i do know from experience uh, seeing some people's posts and pictures on forums that a lot of the times this polymer tip will actually catch up on a feed ramp um if it, i've heard of, of this uh, especially on xds's um but like i said you know if it runs in your gun if you have no problems with it, you've trained enough with it, you've practiced enough with it, you can trust your life with it, don't get caught up on what you read on the internet too much. That's personally what I carry in my Ed Brown magazine, or keep stored in my Ed Brown magazine. I also have the Spear Gold Dot 45 um, 230 grain uh, jacketed hollow points. Uh, these are a uh, bonded bullet, good for barrier penetration. For maybe uh, somebody who, uh, you know, is sensitive to recoil they do make the hydroshocks i do believe these are hydroshocks yeah hydroshocks 165 grain uh, these are a great bullet um, very low mild recoil i've tested these as well moving down the line we have um, the winchester pdx1 i mean always a favorite of mine i actually run these in, a, in several calibers including uh, 762 by 39 for my ak-47 and these, yeah, like I said, these are 230 grand. The awesome bullet. And finally, um, just from what I carry here, these are the um, Ranger T's in 45 Auto T Series. And uh, this is a very nasty round. Um, I, I do like the ballistics on this round. It is a non bonded round, it is a jacket of hollow point. Um, but it, like I said, it just depends on your personal preference. As far as the gun goes, I can tell you that it's eaten up everything that I've thrown at it, um, including uh, Tula ammo, which is uh, steel cased. Um, I don't have any too strong of opinions on steel cased. Um, people say that it breaks off your extractors. Uh, I could get onto a whole spiel about that, but I think it's safe. Anyways, it just goes to further the, the, the point that um, this, this gun eats up everything, and um, I have no problems with it. I really enjoy it. And I uh, wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of what I want to plan on plan on doing with this thing. Um, I have a Silencer Co. Osprey. And huh, I've had a little bit of fun with this. Maybe not as much fun as I would have liked because school's been so busy. But I do plan on putting this on the uh, Dan Wesson Valor. And... Uh, this is going to be a good time. I'm going to see if I can maybe get Dan Wesson to thread a barrel for me or maybe get a Barstow barrel and have a local gunsmith um, install it for me. But uh, if there's one thing that I can tell you guys about uh, 1911s uh, is that they make excellent suppressor hosts. Even if you don't want to carry a 1911, hey, that's no problem. Uh, if you plan on getting into suppressors, you're going to want to think really strongly about buying a quality uh, 1911 such as this to suppress. It's a, it's a heck of a lot of fun. We use the Osprey you might have seen in some of our videos with the um, SIG uh, 1911 Tac Ops. And, uh, I mean, no hiccups whatsoever. Um, just, just an awesome suppressor. And um, I hope uh, you guys will stay tuned for more 1911 comparisons and um, suppressor videos. Oh, yeah, one thing that I wanted to mention, too. Uh, we will have a uh, review coming up on the Rock Island Armory 1911. If maybe uh, there are some people out there who don't want to spend so much money on a 1911, but they still want something that they can depend on, I do not knock um, GI-style 1911s. I mean, like I said, as long as it runs, hey. You know, what you can afford is what you should get. Um, but I will tell you that uh, I have had really great success with this gun. Uh, it has performed well as well. And you don't need to spend $2,000 to get something that you can have fun with or, you know, take the kids out and, you know, just have something to yourself that you really can enjoy. Um, this gun has run just as well as the, as the Valor. And, I mean, $400 after, you know, everything out the door. 
you can't beat it. But it just depends on what features that you guys want and you know what you're willing to spend. Um, trigger pull also on this. I mean, I mean it's not obviously it's not as as nice of a trigger as is what you would have on on the Valor. But I mean, guys, it's doable. It's 1911. They're notorious for having great triggers. But I do hope that you enjoyed this review of the Dan Wesson Valor um, from Dan Wesson, a uh, CZ company. And uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. This has been Blaze with Blazing Bullets, and take it easy, guys. Be safe.